Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees. Today I wanted to teach you another method of transitioning from unhealthy nesting material to healthy nesting material. If you've seen a lot of our videos, you've seen the life cycle of a mason bee. Look at all these little bees buzzing me. Hello little bees. Um, it's really important if you're hosting mason bees that you're harvesting and cleaning them every year. If you're utilizing our program, you're sending your nesting material back to us and we'll harvest and clean everything for you. But if you're hosting your own bees, there's three very important components to making sure your bees are healthy. The first one is the proper nesting material. Bamboo or logs with holes drilled in it you can't use those because you are not able to clean them. And the predators like the Houdini fly, the pollen mites, and the chalk brood will linger inside of that nesting chamber and emerge the following spring with your mason bees. So they'd be really dangerous for your next generation of mason bees. So you need to be able to harvest and clean everything. Um, so when you're using logs with holes drilled in it or bamboo, bamboo gets moldy, logs with holes, again, you can't clean. So we got a couple of blocks back from hosts that um, want to transition from proper, from not the right nesting material to the right nesting material. And so I'm releasing bees. And so you're seeing all the bees buzzing me because I just released them. So I don't know if there's too many left in here, but here's the two new methods. I showed you and I'll link the video below, the one method where you can lay them flat and sprinkle sawdust or grass seed the bees will emerge and then it will fill. The second method you can use is you can use a mesh tool bag and you can simply wrap the, um, the not proper nesting material. So if you have bamboo, a cute little bee hotel, or you have um, a log with holes drilled in it, you can simply just wrap it in the tool and then very gently open them up, let your bees fly out and then seal it back up again. Um, these bees are buzzing because they want back in and you don't want them to go back in to this bad nesting material because there's predators and stuff that um, are in here. You're going to want to dispose of this at the end of the season. The second method of releasing bees is just in a clear plastic container. So you can see I have a few bees that are emerging and again these little bee hotels are so cute. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> but they're the wrong nesting material. Look at all the different size holes. It's bamboo. It's super glued to the back of this cute little bee house and you can't pull these out to clean. So you're gonna wanna transition from these type, this style to stacking trays or cardboard tubes that you can unravel and roll. Um, uh, again, here's another cute little bee hotel. Same type of setup with a big bamboo. And then this is a pretty common one that a lot of people use. Um, and some people I've seen transition these where they pull out the bamboo because they're super glued and they fill them back up with the cardboard um, tubes that you can unravel. This one came back from a host that's never been clean. It's been in their yard for over four years and it's full of spiders and um, predators and all sorts of nasty things. So I am just releasing the bees from all of this not good nesting material, letting them fly and as you can see, they're everywhere. And then as soon as I release them, I put the lid back on so they can't go back in. So I'll quickly do that. And um, that's just another method of transitioning from unhealthy nesting material to healthy nesting material. I'll show you this little bee house. Make sure I don't step on any bees. I built this little bee house this year. You're gonna wanna set up clean nesting material next to where you're releasing your bees so that they can go and find holes um, that are healthy that you can clean. So I actually built this one this year. This is my new one. I do a lot of pictures and so I wanted to be at, at the level where I can sit here and take pictures of bees. But this is what, about three feet, four feet high. I found an old pot. I filled it with rocks, went to the hardware store. They gave me a scrap of wood. I just simply nailed our bee house onto the piece of wood, filled the rest with soil and set up my own little bee house. So when you're releasing bees from the old nesting material, provide the clean, healthy nesting material, and then they'll be off and happy, and then you'll dispose of that old nesting material because it's probably full of Houdini fly, chalk brood, and pollen mites. Um, so please follow our YouTube channel, subscribe, because we teach a lot about bees. Visit our website at rentmasonbees.com, follow and subscribe to our newsletter. I have lots of different methods and ways of teaching you proper care and maintenance of solitary mason bees and leafcutter bees. And we just appreciate all of you, all of our bee enthusiasts that are hosting bees and renting through our program. And uh, we hope you all um, have a great pollinating. Happy pollinating. Bye.